Good evening, class. Uh, tonight, I'd like to go over uh, that page 14. You might have caught about a one-minute video. I didn't realize I was on air. I think I was on air. Ignore that. Uh, anyway, we have uh, page 14, which is the last page in this set of uh, plumbing questions. Like I, I think I mentioned the other night, we do have a few pages of gas we might get to. All right, so what I'd like to do is to cover this page. Uh, there's quite a bit in here. And uh, I'd like to take my time. I don't want to rush through it. So let's get started. All right. So on page um, one, uh, excuse me, page 14, the first question, question number 120. Now, what I did, and I'm not saying you have to do this because you're going to be taking these classes for several years. Uh, I just put the actual number of the, uh, the problem right next to the uh, where it is in the book so I can reference it easier. Okay, so it says here, what determines the size of the yoke vent? And if you look on page 175, uh, let's turn to it. And it says here, the size of the relief vent. Now, right off the bat, I suspect that some of you, if you tried to do this, you might not have found it. But they don't refer to it as a yoke vent. At least I don't see it here. It's a relief vent which is a yoke vent is a type of relief vent. They just don't call it by that name. So what I did, and I suggest you all do this, if you've got your book there, page 175, top of the page, letter E, it says relief vent. And then it's got uh, three subparagraphs. Uh, next to letter E, you might want to put yoke vent because everything they're saying here, this 10 branch interval is a yoke vent. So what they're saying is that a yoke fan? I'm going to make this very quick on the board here. Let's say that you have a really tall building. There's only a handful around the floor area. They usually like the high rise for the elderly. But if you have a, uh, a building like that, maybe something in Providence, you might have something, say, in the 20 story range, and you have all these multiple floors. Okay, what they're saying is at some point, you're going to have to. Uh, tie the vent stack into the main stack because you don't want a pressure differential, right? So if you got like 20 stories, I guess they want to keep it. So what it would look like would be something like this. Okay. It would just connect with this stack here. Now I'm putting in a Y just to be safe because you don't want any water crossing over this way. Uh, honestly, I've never worked in a building high enough that it needed this. Okay, but if you do, this is the yoke vent. And they mention every, if you do a building over 10 floors, you need a yoke vent. And the answer to it is uh, on page 175, top of the page, and it was letter um, 5E is the answer. So that would be uh, five starts on the previous page. And E is at the top of page 175, and it reads... It was uh, 5E, 1 to 3. The size of the uh, vent stack shall be equal to the size of the, the size, the relief vent size shall be equal to the size of the vent stack itself. So this is the, what I'm talking about right here. So if this here, the relief vent, let's say this was 2 inch, it's probably going to be bigger. Let's say it was 2 inch. Then the yoke vent, which is what I circled, would obviously be the same size. Okay, but the main thing there I'd like you to remember is that it doesn't say yoke vent, so you're gonna have to put it in yourself. Okay, now question number 21 what is a yoke vent? Okay, now this one you have to flip to the definitions, and I believe it's page 90. I'm gonna flip back to page 95 and uh, let's see what it says. Now, this is the last definition on page uh, 95, just before they go into the, another another chapter or another section. <clears throat> and they have in parentheses, relief foot vent, a vent foot. And they describe it as a pipe connecting upward from a soil or waste stack to a vent stack and designed for the purpose of preventing pressure changes in the stack, kind of like what I said. And it did say uh, pitching up, All right? So that, apparently that's right. Okay, now here they call it a yoke vent, and in parentheses they call it also a relief vent. 
But if you flip to page uh, 175 where we just were, it doesn't say that. So it's a little a little difficult. If you pull, uh, you know, you can pull your hair out looking for it, and you're not going to find it, except as a definition. So that was uh, number 121 on the definitions. Number 122. What's the minimum size future vent? Okay. Uh, now we're on the chapter on vents. We just were. I'm going to get back to it. On the chapter on vents. And uh, that's where we start. So get used to it. Just about everything on vents you're going to find in the chapter on venting. And uh, I'm looking at page 179. And uh, 14B. 14B. Okay, so it's the top of 179, letter B. It says, buildings that require a main vent stack have a future vent connection full size of the vent stack in all of the buildings. There shall be a minimum of two inch future vent connection. Okay, so there it is, two inch. There it is in writing. Now, those of you who have done new homes in particular, a small light commercial, you probably run vent stacks. And I bet that all of you have run only two inch. Now, anybody here who works in Boston, really big buildings, uh, that's it's gonna be another you're gonna be in another league altogether, and I suspect the vent sizes will be bigger. In this book, our code book, I think there's one sketch where it bumps up to uh, two and a half, but nearly everything that we deal with in the book and in uh, real life around this area is gonna be two inch only. Both the vents, the future vent itself and the vent stack. Okay, um, question number 123. All right, before we can go to 123, while we're talking about vents, vent stacks, and so on, let's do a quick refresher on this. I'm just going to do something quick. We'll do, uh, let's see. Okay, what I drew very quickly, not, not the, obviously not the fancy, uh, was just a uh, regular uh, sketch. I left the kitchen sink out, which would be over here on a separate stack. Normally, it's on a separate stack, as you all know. So what we have here is a two-floor house. This would be what I call in the city. It's not going through the foundation wall. It's going under the floor. If it was going through the wall, I'd probably have to bring it over here and down and out the wall. I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm actually making it easier for my sketch. So what we have is two water closets. Now you all know that two water closets in any configuration, same floor, different floors can be three inch. If you have three water closets, you can have one, one, and one, two, one, or something like that. You just can't have three on one floor. But since it's only a two floor house, three inch is fine. You could even add something in the basement. You know, uh, if you want to finish the basement and put a bathroom down here, legally you could. Um, based on how many water closets are here. In any case, the stack would be three inch, right? Three inch all the way up and out. The vent stack, we just talked about it, two inch. Future vent would be right opposite the water closet. Now, I don't think we've talked about it this year, but you do the kind of water uh, vent, future vent that your boss wants. I used to like to put it in a dandy. Some guys want to drip it back into the stack. If I went into a town where I didn't know the guy, I would ask him directly, Are you okay with a, with a dandy? Because some guys are looking for like an upside down TY, they want to drip back into the stack. To me, that's a production. This is very clean and neat with a clean out cover. You unscrew it, put in a male adapter, and you're off. You're off to the races. Also, when you put in a future vent, for those of you who haven't done many new houses, get it as high as you possibly can. Right? I'm putting it right across from the water closet, which is up in the bay. 
There's a reason. If you put it any lower and you're cut, trying to come across a ceiling, keeping up tight, you can't come across like this and jog down and in. I've seen it once. It was a homeowner permit in Rhode Island. Unfortunately, they, they had those. Uh, and occasionally somebody would actually try to attempt to do it themselves. Majority of the people that took out homeowner permits, and I saw a lot of them because I also did building permits, um, the majority of the people would hire a ringer who might not have a, uh, a Rhode Island license. It might have a mass license, but no Rhode Island license, or a pretty good journeyman or an apprentice, because in, in Rhode Island, a journeyman cannot take out a permit. So uh, most of the homeowner permits, in my opinion, were a scam, and as I couldn't do much about it unless I caught them. Anyway, that's another story. Okay, so your future vent is up high like this here. All right, now we did all this before, so I don't want to... I don't want to beat this all to death. This is obviously a wet vent. All right, I'll just, just beat on it a little bit. Wet vent, everything is two inch back into the stack, okay? Now, let's see. The, uh, the future vent right here is two inch. Don't forget this. Now, if you do a house on the sticks, on the sticks would mean like where there's no town or city sewer. It's hard to get a future vent in because you're already starting four feet off the floor, right? Roughly four feet off the floor, All right? Usually about chest high. And uh, it's kind of hard. You got a lot to do there before, you know, to get a future vent in. And uh, a lot of times you don't see one. So this here obviously is much easier to to do in real life and even to draw on the board here, I can I can slip in my future vent. So any plumbing that goes on in the basement. Now, right now, I wish I had a future vent in my basement. I don't. My uh, pipe goes out, my building drain goes out through the wall four feet high, at least four feet high. It might even be a little higher. Um, yeah, there's no vent. So I'm kind of stuck there for fixtures in the cellar. Okay, so uh, this is what the future vent would look like right here right up tight at the ceiling with the toilet and uh it would be two inch now remember what this is this is the vent stack i've mentioned this before but don't forget it okay it goes from the up here and all the way down to here okay top to bottom now my old night school instructor said this is a nice job because this Clothes washer connection or uh, laundry sink, which you usually put the clothes washer hook into, hook it into there, which same symbol. It rinses it out very nicely at the bottom. I agree. Good plumbing. When I put the clean out here. It could go underneath here. Uh, I keep it above it because who cares if the clean out's a little higher? You kind of you could be a little tight. You don't want this to be too high for the clothes washer. I burned out the pump on a clothes washer. Uh, I hate to tell you how many years ago. It was like 47 years ago when I moved into a house and I had to go over a doorway to get the pipe to drain into a dry well. And uh, I held it up and I got to about a little over six feet high. And the pump, which was pumping, I had a five-gallon bucket, of course. And I, when I got up to a certain height, it was just like somebody had a faucet. And when I dropped it down just several inches, it came back on. So I, I set it high enough that it would pump and it went overhead and you could walk under it. And it burned out within not long, a year or two. And the guy, the uh, repair guy told me that was too much of a strain on it. Okay, so you don't want it pumping up too high. Um, that's why I have the clean out here rather than under here. All right, so if it's a little tight getting everything in, because you don't want to put any of this pipe in the, um, in the concrete if you don't have to. I mean, up in here. Okay, uh, vent stack goes from where it ties in up in the attic all the way down to the bottom here. Now, could this have gone out the roof separately? Absolutely. Normally, the vent stack doesn't go out separately because it's parallel to the main stack and close. So when you get in the attic, it makes no sense to go out twice. Once in a while, like you get a kitchen sink and uh, there's space between it and this stack, maybe a uh, cathedral ceiling or something where you cannot get a pipe back over to here because it's exposed all the way up. Once in a while, that happens, but not too often. And if it was over maybe 20 feet, I'd go out the roof. But if it was closer than 20, I would run through the attic and tie back into the stack like this if I had other vents. But this is the vent stack. Now, the tricky thing that you just have to learn and not get mixed up on is 
And I don't know if you guys can see this in color. I think you told me you can't. But in any case, I'm doing this in red. This is the stack vent. Okay, the stack vent is the portion of the stack starting at the highest fixture to where it goes out the roof called the vent terminal, which is like where the, where the vent opens to the air. Remember that 18 and 24 out the roof. Okay. Vent stack, excuse me, stack vent. How do you keep the name straight? This is almost all vent, a little bit, little piece at the bottom. You can have it, you can drain something into it, but mainly it's a vent. So the vent comes first. This one is mainly a drain or a stack for your fixtures. It's not a vent. The only vent portion is the very top. So this one here, we call a stack vent. Okay, that's the difference. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, this, uh, we're gonna move on to, uh, Also, before I, I move on, because I don't, since we only got, I can't believe it, we only got two classes booked for the next uh, next week, and technically we'll be done. That'll be 111 hours, if my memory's right. We're coming up on the very end of this, so I don't know that I'll be doing any more sketching like this again, or any kind of sketching. If you got questions on it, you want me to go over it, I'm not on any kind of tight schedule. I can, I can review or do something that you'd like, if everybody agrees with it next week okay so when we uh talk tonight uh, actually I'm, I'm talking i got this in reverse by the time you see this you would have already talked to me i'll try to remember to ask you if you'd like to uh, go over anything think about it for next week okay moving on uh how would you enlarge a pipe how would you enlarge a pipe through the roof in order to accommodate whore Frost, H O A R. All right, this would be. Uh, I've never seen it. Honestly, I've never seen frost uh, inside the pipe. But what I'm thinking is, if you haven't been in a basement, I haven't seen this in years. Well, I haven't been working, out, you know, in basements in years. If you go into an old house that doesn't have any insulation on the foundation wall, modern houses. Even I was still working, you know, like 30 years ago. Um, they had like the styrofoam on the outside or on the inside. And I remember they'd come right up out of the ground. And the problem was when you had to like chop through the wall, you had to chop a hole through the styrofoam. I remember using a, a shovel and making a hole bigger than I needed and, uh, you know, put my pipe through. But if you don't have insulation, maybe you guys have seen it, especially if you got a lot of foundation showing above the ground. Now, I think you're all aware that insulation has an R factor on it. R, R is the resistance of heat flowing through any material. Like R1 would be single pane glass. You know, it's, it's terrible. Sheetrock is about the same. R2 would be the old fashioned storm windows. Like you might have your grandmother's house if they've never been replaced. Um, the modern windows, of course, are much better. And they actually call use an E factor to measure that, which I am not that familiar with. But insulation in the walls. Uh, years ago, like 40, 50 years ago, it was our, uh, our 11 for two by four insulation, three and a half inches thick, 14 and a half inches wide, fit nice and snug. Some of you guys have, I bet most of you have done this. You get those little flaps over and, and, um, you know, you have a staple gun. Now, before I go any further, uh, this actually is leading right into some plumbing. If any of you go on a job, uh, not so much now when you're working with a boss, um, but if you're doing your own thing, now, if you're doing your own thing and, and you're getting in pretty deep, putting in a whole bathroom, I want to be careful, let the owner buy the material because you have no recourse. If they stiff you, you cannot take them to court. And once the material is installed, you'll never get it out. Okay. I only did that once. I hadn't hooked anything up yet. And I was being stiff. I went before business hours, like at six 30 when it was just daylight. I put one tub in the back of the truck. My father had a bigger truck than me. Cast iron tub in the back. And I put the fiberglass unit up on the roof. In fact, my father was young enough that he helped me do this. He was still working. And uh, down the road we went and returned him to Plumber's Supply for full credit. Okay, they let me slide on the fact that, you know, the, 
the box was trashed and everything, but the units were not in any way damaged. Okay, but you're not technically not supposed to do that. You probably should ask a lawyer about that one. But once it's actually installed, good luck. You know, you're not going to be able to get it out. So be careful, you guys working on the side. If the owner wants to provide the material, think about it because they're not going to want you marking it up anyway. But um, just keep it in mind. And then if they stiff you at the end, I heard a horror story from my night school, my night school instructor. Somebody, I think it was one of his students before my time. He did a job, good size job. And when he got done, the owner asked for his license, knowing full well he didn't have one. The guy couldn't provide it. See you later. Okay. So be careful. Anyway, uh, the reason I mention that, and I get off onto business, is if you have a fiberglass unit, which we still have, of course, or acrylic or whatever they want to call it, and you put it on an outside wall, sometimes, um, a lot of times it's on an outside wall, right? It could be on two outside walls. I've seen that plenty of times with the valve on the inside wall. All right, those in particular, you're out in the middle of nowhere, right? And the contract is long gone. He swept up, took everything, he's out of there. And now what you need is some insulation. Well, you're not going to rip it off the walls, all right? Lunchtime or the next day or somewhere when it's not going to inconvenience you, go and pick up a roll, and you're going to use most of half to most of the roll. Been a lot of times I did that. Tack it in. Now, you, if you don't have a staple gun with you, you can use clip nails or anything to get it and hold it in place. Once the sheetrock goes up, you don't have to worry about what's holding the insulation in place. But it should be more than just the, uh, like a gravity fit into the wall. You don't want it sliding down. If you don't do that um, and the carpenter doesn't pick up on it, they probably won't, um, it's going to be cold. right? Somebody's going to hear about it. So do yourself a favor might even freeze your pipes, which are going to be right there, right next door to the this wall, maybe, what, less than two feet away, uninsulated. So, uh, and then, of course, tell your contractor, he owes you one, right? At least the role of insulation, okay? Most times, they're appreciative. Uh, usually, they take care of it. But if for some reason, you get in there before the insulators, the insulators aren't magicians. They cannot get in the three-and-a-half-inch space with the insulation. They can kind of drop it in there, but just going to be flapping around, right? So think about that. Okay, um, let's move on to the next one. Oh, that hoar frost, I started talking about it and I, I, I dropped it. Uh, and I got off on the, the uh, foundation wall. A wall that's not insulated, you can see the frost from the ground level or a little bit below it, right up to the top of the foundation because the cold is coming through. You can actually take your fingernails and scratch that frost. It's kind of like the early frost in the fall on your windshield, right? You can take a credit card if you ever tried that. It actually works pretty good and scrape that frost right off. The reason that you have to go through the roof in Massachusetts with at least two inch is because they're afraid of this hoar frost. In other words, um, I guess the frost from the between the air, maybe a little rain, a little whatever, will block up the vent. Now, you could get away with a vent maybe a half inch. would work great. Think about the, oh, you guys all been, I'm sure have had those old gas cans where it's got that second hole about the size of a BB or a little bigger. Okay, if that cap is blocked, it glugs out, right? The gas, whatever it is that's in there, or diesel, depending on what kind of engine you have. Um, so you don't need much to vent it. But in our case, that two inch is uh, more than enough for this area. Now, did I ever see a small event go through the roof? The answer is yes. Uh, it was so long ago, I was a brand new apprentice. It was about 50, almost 50 years ago. My father helped me at my own house, and he didn't have any two-inch. And believe it or not, it was so long ago, there was no codes in Rhode Island. It was like the, honestly, it was like the Wild West. Nobody came to look at the house, which was unbelievable. So he did plumbing. It was copper and cast. He didn't like PVC was just coming in, and we used copper. And I say we. I was his helper. Copper and cast iron. And it was an addition that I had built myself onto my house. And I put a kitchen sink in it. it came into the basement and tied in. It was, everything was done properly except the vent going out the roof. Stuck a piece of inch and a half out, maybe a foot long. In Rhode Island, by the way, it only is a foot long. But in those days, there was no code. So that inch and a half was there for all the years that I was there, which was 30, 31 years. So 30 years. And that inch and a half never blocked with the weather. 
Okay, so inch and a half will get by. It was at a time when there was no codes. Now, I, I know the code in Rhode Island is two inch out the roof, but in those days, there was no code. So inch and a half would work, but our code doesn't want to hear it. Now, remember, you new, fairly new guys, you're coming up with your inch and a half vent, and you're up in the attic. Now you got to go out the roof. Now you got to jump at the two inch a foot below the roof. Okay, a picky inspector, like out of town guy, might call you on it if you didn't switch over until you right up against the roof because you're going to form a ledge there where that it's like a funnel and that's where you might get some snow and ice building up okay but you're supposed to drop it a foot inside the uh inside the attic okay so it'll be like up in here somewhere okay um let's see the switching over to um automatic vents here so the hoar frost fancy name for frost that kind of builds up and you don't want ice and snow to build up in there either Number 124. Now, I know we've talked about this a number of times. In fact, one of you had a story about it. I really don't have any stories about the automatic vent other than it. Uh, I find it kind of amusing that you're supposed to go to the state board for something, you know, the size of a little little cup, a little uh, uh, what you, we call a pro vent. They call it a mechanical vent. We know it as a pro vent, which is a trade, which is a, a uh, private name, you know, a uh, company name for a, a automatic vent. Now, one thing I don't think we talked about is you guys have all heard about pro vents and automatic vents. And some of you might not ever use one, especially if you're doing commercial work. But if you're doing remodeling and repair work and you've exhausted every legal way to do it and um, you're probably not going to, and you're not getting a permit. Well, I'm not telling you to break the law, but if you're not getting a permit, one solution would be to uh, put a drum trap on it, right? Which is what I did once because the inspector, there was no way out of it. Even he couldn't, he was a guy who was good, and he couldn't think of a way out. It was an island sink, and just the way everything went around it, it wasn't working out. I says, well, I'll put a pro vent in. He says, no, you don't want to hear about the pro vent. He told me to use a two-inch drain instead of an inch and a half, but use a, a drum trap. I said, sure. And I did, and I never got a call back. And that was like maybe 40 years ago, so I think I'm safe. All right, but the way a pro vent works, and by the way, the dimensions are going to come up later. you got a sink. Okay, you're in an island like this, and the sink is up here, right? And the island uh, is the cabinet. This goes under the floor. We got to clean out down here and off it goes, goes somewhere. And normally we'd put a bow vent in right here and bring it down and so on. And some of you guys have done that. The pro vent, if you can't do a bow vent, would go right here, six inches up maximum. And the symbol would look like that. So this would be six inches. Okay, is a pro vent. The reason it's six inches is because if you go any longer than that, the water going down, the way air works, air, air is very compressible, uh, might not be enough to pull a vacuum because that's how this works. So when the air, when the water comes through here like this, it pulls this air, it's pulling a vacuum. So it's pulling the air down like that and it unseats the, the, valve, the uh, provent. The provent kind of looks like this. All right, it's inch and a half at the bottom, so it threads into like an inch and a half female adapter. Up here, it's got slots cut all the way around. All right, all the way around. And inside, it's got a disc with, uh, with a rubber disc, and it's on a spring. And when the... Uh, this here... The suction is going down, it unseats this, which seats like that, pulls this disc down, and the air can get by it and go down and relieve the pressure, right? So it doesn't glug. You know, kind of just like we take a gallon of water and you turn it upside down, it's not very smooth. 
But with this, it is. Uh, this is a breeze to put in, female adapter up here. You thread this thing in like a light bulb, see you later. One catch with this is you got to keep it where it's accessible, or readily accessible. It really shouldn't be even accessible. You want this in the open. Under a cabinet, no problem. Just put it in high enough that you can get at it and replace it. The higher the better because you don't want the water, especially if it blocks up down here, you don't want it coming out your vent right before it floods over the side. Okay? But remember, this is 6 inch right here. Actually, this would determine where this is would determine how high this is here. It's up pretty high. Okay, now the other measurement, I believe, is 12 right here. Right, like this. I'm going to have to double check that one because I don't think this was a question. Okay, but you have to keep this thing tight. They don't want this, any of these distances, especially this one. Now, you're going to say, what this difference does it make? Nobody, no inspector is going to look at it. You're right. The only way you can get this in is if you go to the state. The local inspector can't even approve that. So you'd have to call up the state, tell them your situation, and um, they would do Oh, I just remembered. It was one of you guys told me it was a big developer in Fall River wanted to put in several of these pro vents in a historical house. I don't want to get into any names. Big developer. And uh, to keep it from, like, punching out walls, which I've done. I had a very, un well, I hate to call him unreasonable. He's just so tough. I spent two days running vents blasting walls and snaking what I could, but uh, in a house that's uh, like revolutionary period house, which I think it was, something very old, historical, on the historical register, I'm sure, um, they wanted to put pro vents in, like a bunch of them, like five, and uh, I guess it was shot down by the board. It's the only time I ever heard of anybody going to Boston to ask. The only problem is you guys that ever have a job, let's say you became a school teacher. I recommend it. If you deal with the kids, nice job. When you get older, um, as you get older, you'll find that beside the pay, which you're interested in when you're young, you um, look into benefits, right? The older you get, the more you look into the benefits, the retirement, sick time if you got any, vacation time, all that kind of stuff. Mainly retirement too when you get older. Um, if you stay in the trade in your own business, you better put a lot of money aside. It's not cheap. You know, a lot of your expenses are still there, right? Um, so let's say you get to be a teacher or some other big job where you have personal days, sick days, and so on, and you need a particular day off for something you consider very important. If you put in for that day as a personal day, I'm thinking like as a teacher. It's never happened to me. But if you put in for that day and they say no, and then you say, ah, screw it, I'll just take a sick day. They're not stupid. They remember that you put in for it, and they rejected it, and now you're taking it off as a sick day, all right? It's a good way to get in a doghouse. So uh, sometimes it might be better to just get sick. Okay, but anyway, none of you guys have those jobs yet, have a job like that, so uh, you don't have to worry about it. But if it ever comes, you ever do take a job teaching or at jo any job where you have personal and sick days, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, this is our buddy, the pro vent, uh, the, uh, what they call the automatic vent. And uh, they mentioned that it's six inches above the crown of the trap. Okay, the crown of the trap, by the way, is right here. So that's easy. It's like I said, six inches above here, like that. Okay, question. Uh, I've got to make this the last one. 125. If you had a house with an in-law apartment, can you run a vent on the outside of the house? Okay, I'll tell you what. I've got uh, just about 35 minutes. I don't want to go any longer than that. All right, so what I'll do is I'm going to stop here and I'm going to pick it up.